Hello everybody, Mr. Gaza here. Coming up, how to find the epicenter of an earthquake. So what we'll do now is we're going to find where on this map uh, the epicenter of this earthquake occurred. Now we need some seismic data and I have it right here. So let's get going. The first one we're going to do is from uh, San Jose, California. So the uh, P wave and then S wave arrive, so we've got to figure out the times. We've got to figure out the time difference. So let's figure out what time the P wave arrived. Well, that's 4, 10, and 0, 0 seconds, 4, 11. So this is one minute. And you've got to figure out, uh, count these out. You figure out these count by 10 seconds. So uh, the P wave arrived at 4, 10, 10 uh, 50. So 4, 10, 50 is the P wave. And then the S wave arrived at 4.13, and then that's 10 seconds. 4.13, 10. And you want to figure out the time difference. What is the time difference between the P wave arrival and S wave arrival at this particular station? So uh, the best thing to do here is to uh, rewrite these as a math problem with the higher number on top to do subtraction. So here we go. 4.13, 10 minus 4. 10, 50. Now you got to be careful with the subtraction here because um, we're dealing with 60 seconds in a minute and it's different than some subtraction. So first ask yourself, can I take 50 away from 10? And you can't, so you need to borrow. So I'm borrowing here. Um, I will borrow here and that will become 12 minutes. Now the careful thing is you're borrowing 60 seconds. You can't put a 1 there. So you have to cross this out, add 60 to it, which you, I'm doing in my head. So that's going to become 70 seconds. And then you'll be able to subtract this from that. So just normal subtraction. That will then be 20 seconds. And then that will be 2 minutes. And then 0, 0. So our uh, time difference there is 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Now that we have this, I want to point out that uh, this math, that that's troublesome to you or you don't like that method, there is another method that a student in my class came up with. It's called the Bray Way. Please look in the description. There's a link to it, uh, and he explains it, and a lot of students like that, so that may help you. A time difference there is 2 minutes and 20 seconds is the S wave arrived uh, 2 minutes and 20 seconds after the P wave. Now how far away was that earthquake from San Jose, California? That's where you need uh, some, you need a reference table and some scrap paper. So 2 minutes 20 seconds, we're going to remember that. 2 minutes and 20 seconds. And then you go to a reference table that has the P and the S wave chart on it. Okay, and then what you need to do is this. So I have a piece of scrap paper here, okay, and what I will do is on the chart here, I'm going to go like this. I'm going to mark zero, and I want a nice good sharp pencil. Mark zero, mark two minutes and 20 seconds, keeping that there. 220, these lines count by 20, so 220 is right there. And you want good marks, a nice sharp pencil, and definitely mark the bottom too. Mark them both, trust me. And then you want to move it till it touches both, and that can be a little bit tricky. I usually keep that on the bottom, on the bottom line, which is the P wave line, and I move it along until it touches the top one. And I'll say it's pretty, well, it's not really there. I'm going to say 1400 is probably, it's not, per, it's not really great, but it's probably the best answer. So for this case, I'm going to say that is uh, 14, it's right there, okay? And that is 1,400 kilometers, uh, so 2 minutes and 20 seconds will give us a distance to epicenter of 1,400 kilometers. Now we have to go back to that map. Where's my map? Okay, back to my map, which is right here. Okay, and I need a drawing compass. And I'm going to see, there's San Jose, California right there. I'm going to draw... Uh, a circle that has a radius of that. So I'm going to go like this, put that right on zero, just like that, and I'm going to slide it to 1400. I've got to figure out what the scale goes by. That's, that's 1500. So 1400 is right here. That's what I'm after. Uh, and then I go like this, and I want to put my arrow right on there, just like that. And I want to be as, sort of as accurate as I can. Then I slide this over to San Jose, and I put this little hole right there. I put that right on San Jose, like that remembering that this is the one I used. Not that one, if you draw it in the wrong one. Common mistake, especially with these when there's two holes in the uh, compass itself. And then I want to draw 
a circle and I'm actually having some tr actually that one doesn't even work that well holy look at this this one does not work that well so then I'm gonna go like this and I got it going okay so this earthquake is somewhere on that line for San Jose next up Memphis Tennessee let's uh, do this so the P wave will arrive at 4 12 and 10 20 30 uh, P wave Now that I have my three circles drawn, I'm drawing, uh, the epicenter will have occurred uh, right where they all meet. Now this, this is often the case, does not meet perfectly, so it's somewhere in there, I'm going to draw an X somewhere in there, like right there. That is where the epicenter of the earthquake was. Now as I said, circles don't often meet perfectly, sometimes you can be off a little more like this. Now, um, pretty much the meeting point where they all meet is anywhere in here. I'm just coloring in with red here, okay? So, um, you should draw your X with the center anywhere in there, and that's sufficient. Uh, or sometimes what happens, the orientation could go like this, and this will be a very different um, earthquake here where they kind of, the best place for they meet is somewhere in here. So, I'm going to kind of, uh, on this line, somewhere in here is where the center of your X should be. I'm coloring it in here in red. And then you draw your X there, and uh, you'd be in pretty good shape.